Now I know a lot of people aren't going to necessarily agree with me. To me, The Division is better than The Division 2. Now I know what you're saying. Well, The Division 2 is more improved. You know, they've they've refined things. They've made things smoother and better. And they've upgraded a lot of the, the problems that we had in Division 1. And that may be true. There may be some upgrades and some things may be smoother. Some things may run better. But the one metric that I always come back to is I'm willing to run a new character in the division. Whereas division two, I struggled to make a second character. I got incredibly bored trying to do a third character and my fourth character, I almost just gave up on. And the only reason I even created those characters was just for stash space. So I wanted more, you know, more space to carry items with the division. I created characters because I wanted to play it again. Now in this video, what I'm going to basically be showing is me going through uh, the beginning of the game again. And actually I'm going to be creating a couple episodes just, you know, showing gameplay, showing me going through um, my gameplay from Division 1, running through it like, you know, the 20th, I don't, I don't even know how many times, running through it again. And, you know, I created my first character and that was to play with... Uh, some friends. I created a second character to play with people that I hadn't even talked to in years, you know, and then discovered they got the game. So we started playing again. So I created another character, I created another character after even after I found, you know, even more friends going to this game. And finally I created a fourth character, you know, just for myself to play through. So there was, you know, a lot of character and this was, this was all in like the first month, you know, this wasn't like, Oh, I'm going to, you know, I didn't get a chance to play it through. No, like I created characters in that first month and just completely geared them up or at least tried to gear them up as best I could because I enjoyed it. I had fun. That didn't, that didn't happen for division two. I barely had the urge to, you know, keep going with one character. <laughs> so, you know, division definitely had a passion and, you know, I can't necessarily put my finger on, uh, on why this is for me. You know, I mean, maybe it's just bias, maybe, you know, it's just, you know, my own mental state, like, no, I'm convinced, I'm convinced that the division is better than division two and no one's going to change my mind on that. I mean, it's possible, but to be honest, you know, I, I think it comes down to a lot of the, the feeling that a game gives you with the division. It feels like there is a passion to create a great game with the division. It feels like they had ideas, they had, you know, concepts that they wanted to convey you know they had things that they wanted to show in this world they had a, a certain degree of emotion that they wanted to put into it you know they wanted people to to feel upset they wanted people to you know, at least have some sort of emotional response to this game you know to feel hopeful that you could change something and improve you know the condition of the city with division two a lot of the emotion really just seems detached from the game with Division 2, it seems like they were just trying to create something just to create something. It, it really just felt like it missed the mark. You know, the, the voice acting wasn't very good. You know, a lot of the the humanality in the actual world just seemed to be missing. I mean, there were a few moments here and there. But Division 1 just kind of included a lot of this stuff just natively in the world. You know not just in the actual environment itself, you know, being the winter, right? I mean, that just kind of creates a, a gloomy foreboding, you know, of the situation in the game. Whereas division two has this lush swampy type atmosphere where it's, it, it feels post-apocalyptic kind of, but it doesn't feel, it doesn't feel hopeless. You know, it doesn't feel like a, a true disaster. It just kind of feels like, okay, something happened here and I'm just going to try to figure out why, you know, that, that's what it feels like. It feels like, you know, the virus, the events in New York, all, all the devastation kind of took a backseat to this, uh, I, I guess mostly uh, political power struggle story, which I mean, that's fine, but it doesn't really convey the humanality of the actual events in the game. And that's where I think the division shined. You know, it doesn't matter what you're doing. I mean, you, you've, you run into people who need your help on the streets, you know, maybe it doesn't really portray it that well. I mean, you just give them a, a candy bar or something like that and send them on their way. But it, it feels like 
there's people that you're saving. It feels like you're doing something for the actual city itself, that you're, you know, making a difference in people's lives. And the Division 2 just doesn't feel like that. It feels like there's, you know, a bunch of settlements that you're just running between doing minor tasks and that's it. You know, it doesn't feel like you're an agent on your, you know, on your own, you know, fighting for survival for, you know, every, you know, weak and vulnerable person in the, in the city. It doesn't feel like you're, you're fighting this, you know, evil, you know, it doesn't feel like you're fighting this, this oppressive power that's, you know, just kind of coming out of nowhere and just destroying the city. It feels like you're fighting some drug dealers in division two. It feels like you're fighting some crazy lunatics in division two. It feels like you're, you know, just fighting just generic bad guys that are just there just because they needed somebody to fill some, some shoes of being bad guys. And again, I'm not saying that everything division is perfect, but the emotional connection is, is more present in the division. And I'm not saying like everything was perfect. I'm not saying the story was just so, you know, mind blowingly amazing, but the game had heart. I mean, that's the best way to put it. The game had heart. Whereas division two seems more just kind of like a procedurally created thing from focus groups. Like, Oh, people didn't like this. So we're going to change it to this, you know, just kind of, they just mathed it too much. They, they basically, you know, just went on graphs and figured out what people like. And then they just kind of compiled a bunch of things that may not really work together into something. And that's pretty much what happened. It doesn't necessarily feel great. You know, when you combine every single thing in, in like a, a bland flavorless stew. And that's kind of how division two feels to me. Now, definitely the one thing I noticed, you know, coming back to this game, I mean, it is pretty clear that there are some improvements in division two. I, and some of them, you know, I kind of agree with some of them. I, you know, I'm not necessarily sure how I, how I like that. Um, in division one, you know, uh, the controls were a little bit stiff or a little bit rougher. You know, the, the shooting mechanics were obviously a little bit more jumpy and I, I would actually say a little bit more realistic. Um, and I know, you know, d depending on the type of player you are and how you actually like to play your games, you know, especially the people in PVP, you're going to say, you know, that, it's so much better when your weapon doesn't move and you can just, you know, <laughs> just fire into somebody's head and they don't do anything. You know, that's, that's, that's fine. If that's, that's how you like the PvP, that's great. Um, but to me, it feels real when, you know, your weapon is actually jumping, when you actually have to fight to control your weapon. You can't just, you know, beam someone from 300 meters away and, you know, with like little to no recoil. That doesn't feel good to me. That doesn't feel right. So... You know, you can kind of take that how you want. I mean, you know, it just really depends. I mean, I like the RPG aspect where the weapon is jumpy. And if you want a, a more controlled weapon, then you need to invest into, you know, weapon stability, weapon handling, accuracy, that kind of stuff. I like the fact that, you know, by the division having really jumpy weapons, when you add its stability and weapon handling, that kind of, you know, those kind of stats, it really felt different. In Division 2, it does have some benefit, I'm not going to lie, but there's even less need to invest into it than, than there was in Division 1. I mean, in, in Division 1, you know, you could just fire like four bullets and you'd be, you know, like three feet over somebody's head. With Division 2, you know, you, you may get that first bullet that jumps, but after that, it's just a slight matter of, you know, just kind of depressing the stick or slightly pulling back on the mouse it's not incredibly difficult to control weapon recoil in Division 2. And of course, you know, just these kind of control differences between the games, you know, going from Division 2 to Division 1, yeah, I mean, if, if you don't really commit to, to understanding the, the mechanics, if you don't really commit to training on the differences, you know, going from Division 2 to Division 1 is going to feel kind of bad. I mean, I know what to expect, I know how the game is, I played it many, many times to, you know, be able to expect this kind of, you know, difference. But if you are jumping into division one completely blind, then yeah, I can understand that, you know, many of you are probably going to think this is rough. You know, you're going to think this is uncontrollable. You're going to think it's, it's not as fun. And I mean, yeah, hey, that's, that's up to you. I mean, you know, you're, you're perfectly, you know, within your right to think that that's, that's not very good. What I would say is, you know, if 
you need it to be, uh, you know, a little bit more controlled, if you need, you know, better handling, well, then just invest in the stability. I mean, there's plenty of stats and, and talents and stuff like that that can give you added stability for the weapons. And, of course, you know, a lot of it is not till end game, but there are a few perks that you can get. You know, uh, the one of my favorites is actually when you enter cover for, like, um, 10 seconds after you enter cover, you get, like, 25% weapon stability. And that's amazing. All it requires of you is just to quickly jump into cover, get the buff, and your weapon is a lot easier to control. And I would actually say that with that 25% stability, weapon control is a lot like Division 2's weapon control. So as long as you can keep that buff active long enough, you're going to have a, you know weapon stability that's pretty comparable to the Division 2. Now, of course, that you know doesn't change every difference. And you know there's still going to be some problems, but... You know, mostly that will take care of the weapon issues. Of course, you know, a lot of people who have issues with weapons in general probably eh, might prefer to use skill builds. But, you know, if you're a skill build, you really don't care what other people are thinking anyway. So, you know, use the turret, use the secret mine, use the sticky bomb, have fun with the game. You know, run some healing builds, you know, run a hybrid. Hybrids were actually pretty good in Division 1. So, you know, those are things that you can do and just have fun. Now, of course, the other thing is, yeah, I, I would say that uh, lag issues or connectivity issues were a little bit more dramatic in Division One. You know, as you're going to see here in a in a couple seconds, um, my game just you know suddenly lagged out. You know, I wasn't doing any damage to to the enemies, and of course, that's a little aggravating when you're in the middle of something. But you know, that's not the end of the world. Just once you know you just connect back to the game and, and go on of course if you're in the middle of a, of a lengthy mission and that happens and you have to start back all over from the beginning yeah that, i mean that gets annoying but either way even with i would say the increased issues of the game you know just the engine itself you know server issues um glitch issues just you know just the generic assortment of, of random problems with the game even if, if they are more prevalent in division one I still just feel that the game feels better. You know, I mean, it's kind of like if you played Cyberpunk, you know, there were many times where issues happened, right? And it aggravated some people. Some people hated it and they just couldn't stand it. And, it, you know, they, they quit the game because they didn't want to deal with these, these glitches or, you know, these loading issues and stuff like that. Other people didn't have that much of a problem with it. And they enjoyed the game and they loved the game. And that that's all that mattered to them. The game was great even with these, you know, issues to them. So if, you know, these issues aren't that bad for you, if, you know, they don't bother you that much, then, you know, you're not going to have a problem with the slightly increased amount of issues. And of course, you know, it, towards the end, towards, you know, like 1.8, when, you know, after Division had been out for, you know, over two years, a lot of the these bugs and stuff like that had drastically been decreased. So it's not as as bad as some people might remember it being. So I definitely wouldn't put it into like a serious problem category. Now, of course, the other thing that I think, you know, I, I kind of find interesting about the Division 1 from Division 2. Combat definitely feels more threatening in Division 1. Now, I'm not saying that, you know, there's a huge amount of difference. I mean, there is some difference. Sometimes, you know, you could say that the AI maybe in Division 2 is a little bit smarter. Um, you could say that maybe they react a little bit more uh, efficiently. Uh, you know, I mean, there, there's various degrees of, of what you could say about it. Because, I mean, you know, obviously it depends on the situation, depends on how you play. You know, a lot of the, the AI mechanics, you know, vary based on what you do. So it's it, it could be completely different if you're a skill build or if you're just a gun build. You know, it doesn't matter if it's Division 1 or Division 2, depending on how you play you know, it, you could see a difference in, in how they behave. But in general, what I would say is that in Division 1, it really felt like the AI was a bit more random. It felt like the AI was a bit more risky. You know, like, they would actually push up and present danger to you. Whereas in Division 2, a lot of the times, it feels like the average enemy is going to hide in the back and not really do too much you know they're going to you know try to hit you with some pot shots they're going to 
sitting behind their cover. And if you, you know, try to use a skill to hit them, they're going to run out of the way. If you just, you know, shoot at them, they're going to basically just sit there. Um, in division one, it, it, you know, sometimes they would just come at you, you know, like, and a lot of people complain about this. A lot of people hated the fact that, well, the enemy just, you know, keeps coming at me and they don't, they don't stop. They just, you know, push towards me and they get you. I mean, if you don't move back, if you don't pull back, if you don't retreat, they will own you. And, you know, I, I kind of enjoyed this, you know, like, obviously you can't have perfect AI. You can't have AI that does whatever anyone wants. And there's a lot of issues with the way that AI are programmed in general for a mass market game because you can't make everyone happy. Well, the one problem that I have with AI is is that you know they need to be difficult. They shouldn't be cheap and cheesy, but at the same time, they they shouldn't avoid doing things because players don't like it right if a player liked everything the ai did well that would you know i think that would kind of defeat the purpose um they're supposed to be doing you know some like unexpected things they're supposed to be pushing up when you don't want them to right i mean that's the whole point you know you push up on the ai when you have them in a bad spot so shouldn't the ai push up on you when they have you in a bad spot i mean shouldn't the ai be pressing you to try to knock you out you know take advantage of a situation and I think the division one did a better job of that. You know, that's uh, one of the biggest, uh, I guess, differences of opinion that I have with a lot of uh, division two fans, right? A lot of people who, who loved PVE in the division in, you know, 1.8 for, and a lot of people who loved, you know, PVE in division two, they like this, this softer, friendlier AI. And I, I don't understand that, you know, to me, the AI, when the division launched the AI you know, during the underground, I mean, the, <laughs> the, the first incursion with the shotgunners, I mean, that is the AI that I would prefer fighting because obviously this game is an RPG. All right. So it's more important that the AI actually prevents, you know, so it's more important that the AI actually presents what I would call a serious threat rather than just things that you just mow through and move on to the next area. And I guess, you know, the case could probably be made that, you know, if you're, if you're just fighting, you know, the basic enemies on, on easy mode or, you know, just normal story missions, maybe they should be, you know, tame and easy for people to, you know, be able to take out pretty quickly. Okay, I can I can understand that argument because obviously there's there's a mode for you know general play. You know, somebody who's not quite into video games, somebody who's you know just playing this because of, you know, circumstances where they're stuck in their house for a year, you know, whatever. Um you know, yeah, I could understand that people want to have a little bit easier of a time. But when you start increasing difficulties and enemies are actually presenting a challenge and then people are complaining that it's too difficult that they can't beat things i mean that's that's where it's supposed to be like if a game is just too easy and you just mow through it then it's not very fun i mean at least to me i mean if if there's no challenge there if it's not like if i can make mistake after mistake after mistake and the game's not going to punish me for it then well, what's the point you know like that if if the build that you use doesn't matter because the enemy themselves do not matter, then again, that ruins a lot of the fun, right? I mean, this is kind of one of the, the, the things that I like to talk about. You know, I've talked about it before with, you know, just cohesion in the game. You know, the, the ideas of the game need to support each other. If you have, um, you know, one of my favorite ones is too much ammo. If you have too much ammo, you don't have to worry about switching your weapons. You don't have to worry about, you know, using a backup weapon. You don't have to worry about using your pistol. And that's the whole reason the pistol's there because, you know, it has infinite ammo. It's, you know, designed to be the backup. And if you don't have a system that, you know, kind of encourages you to use things to, to I guess, you know, follow the abilities that are in the game, to follow the talents that are in the game, to use these to overcome certain shortages, 
then it gets wasted and that that relates to the ammo i mean if you have too much ammo then you don't need to use talents that give you ammo if you have too much ammo then you don't need to use things you know like the the ammo box that gives you ammo whenever you reload right so if you just don't run out of ammo then that creates a huge issue if you can just go to a, a restock box after every fight you know it creates unintended consequences you know it may be fun that you can just use the same weapon the entire way through and never have to worry about it you know some people may like that but on the other hand you need to understand that sometimes by giving too much by giving this excessive amount of, of ammo right you know sometimes you just need to understand that whether you like it or not at a certain point giving excessive ammo does impact how things are played it does impact build diversity and, you know, that's kind of the one thing that that bothers me when people, you know, scream about build diversity. A lot of the times they don't even understand what causes build diversity. A lot of the times they don't understand that the things that they want, the things that they demand in the game are the actual reasons why build diversity suffers. When you make an A, when you make the AI in general too weak, when you make them, you know, more or less boring. Uh, that doesn't encourage build diversity because you don't need to overcome the enemy, right? The only reason you actually start making different builds is because you're bored. So you just start playing with something else because you have nothing else to do. You know, that's the kind of build diversity that we have in the division right now. I'm playing this because why not? I, I don't got, I, I, you know, I don't have anything else to do, so I'm just going to play this. And, you know, again, when you get into these situations, a lot of what you can do you know, or a lot of what you want to do is dictated by what you, you know, need. And if you don't need anything, then you don't want to change anything. You know, for example, if, if they, you know, crit chance was, you could get up to a hundred percent crit chance, you know, people would be dying to get a hundred percent crit chance. All right. So that, that would kill diversity. If you could get, you know, if you could only get, let's say 30 or 40% crit chance. So meaning the, the amount of crit chance that you could actually get would be a lot lower then that would open up different ways to make diverse builds. Now, of course you might say like, well, people are just going to, you know, just max out crit damage or whatever. And maybe, but there might be some people who are like, well, I can only get 30% crit chance now. I mean, that doesn't seem like there's any point to it. I might as well just go with, you know, a health build. You know, I might go with re armor regen and health, you know, because I'm just not getting as much damage as I was from crit. You might get people that just make full AR headshot damage builds because they think, you know, crit's not really that worth it. And this is the kind of things that you, you know, you get with the balance situation. So in division one, a lot of the times it felt like the enemy was pushing you. The enemy was, you know, making you use certain things, you know, in, in various encounters, you know, you couldn't just rely on the same build every single time. Sometimes, you know, a skill build might need to use, you know, turret and seekers. Sometimes they might need to use the sticky bomb. Other times you might need to use the defensive skill. So you might need to use um, the mobile cover or the smart cover. You might need to use the, uh, the, the gas seeker. I forget what that thing's called, but you might need to use these status effect builds to to blind the enemy to you know to disorient the enemy to burn the enemy you know you, you might need to create these obstacles to stop them to slow them down because they're going to come at you they're going to rush you and that's you know one of the the good things about the shotgunners in division one was they did rush you they did push you they were dangerous they would kill you <laughs> quite easily and uh you know I, I would say that the the riker shotgunners are very similar to the LMB shotgunners in Division One. So, you know, a lot of times the, the Riker shotgunners in Division Two would just straight up run at you. And, you know, th that was good. I mean, like, I kind of enjoy that mechanic. But, of course, they've tamed them down a lot. You know, they don't do as much damage. They're they're not quite as, as laser-focused on rushing towards you. Um, they don't really seem like they're moving as fast or, you know, hitting you from as far away with their shotguns. You know, there's, there's some subtle differences there where they, you know, they definitely changed it compared to the way it was in division one. And of course, you know, you may have your own opinion on this, right? You, you may think that, well, I, I prefer it like this when I just rushed you when you couldn't do anything about it. It wasn't fun, but here's the thing. 
you could do stuff about it. There, there was ways to counter this stuff in Division One, and that's the whole point. It made it fun, you know. Like you know this area, right? You you know that in this fight you're going to be rushed. You know where you know as soon as you get past this door, you're going to have these shotgunners coming at you. You know that's when you throw the you know your flame grenade. You throw it on the ground right there, so you know they start rushing out and they get burned. You know you throw your flashbang. You know they they basically you know run into that and they get blind. And there's ways to mitigate the the you know tactics of the enemies. And that was fun because you know you have a you have a set you know you understanding of what's going to happen, and you know what pieces are going to need to be used. Now, if this doesn't happen, right? If this, you know, just goes out the window, then you don't have to really change your build, change your, you know, your style up at all. And I think that's what I liked about Division 1. A lot of the times, you did need to change up your style. You know, you did need to have a different team composition. You know, you, you may be able to run a DPS all the time, as long as your partner, you know, or partners are supporting you. You know, as long as they're changing up stuff to get through the fight. You know, as long as your, you know, your skill build isn't just using the flame turret the entire time, maybe he's using, you know, a sticky bomb occasionally to, to soften up a, a big group of enemies that are walking around, you know, whatever it is, there's certain things there that you did need to change and it felt like it, you know, looking at the incursions, especially there were many times where you needed to use something to get through something, you know, like the, the last incursion that they made, which was, um, stolen signal there were portions of that map where you needed to use the shield. And if you didn't use the shield, if you didn't have a good shield build, you'd probably just fail. Now, some people, now here, here's the, here's the issue. You know, some people are going to say like, well, it's, I shouldn't have to use something. And I mean, I can understand with that in theory, you shouldn't have to use something, but at the same time, you don't have to play the game, right? Anyway, you know, I guess my thought process is if the game isn't putting effort into making you something, if the game isn't you know, making it difficult for you, if the game isn't, you know, increasing a difficulty to actually encourage diversity, then you're not going to have it, right? If you can just go through the game without upgrading anything, if you can just use the same, you know, weapon the entire time, then it doesn't really, you know, alter your play style. It doesn't really change. The game kind of dies and feels boring. You know, that, that's basically what happens. So, I mean, if you go through the game, you pick up their first weapon and that's all you need to use, you know, you, the, the enemies don't increase in difficulty. You know, there's no real scaling. There's nothing. Then what's the point of continuing? You know, like you don't need to farm anything. You can just kill all the enemies and, you know, a couple shots and that's it. But again, you know, there, there should be portions of the game, at least in, in my opinion, designed for, you know, specific build ideas in mind or specific skill combinations in mind. Now, of course, if you're, you know, you're a solo player and I mostly do play solo. I play in, you know, I, I can play in groups and I've done the raids and everything. So yeah, I do understand a wide, you know, diversity of topics on this. You know, I understand a lot of viewpoints here, but what I'm saying is that if you are playing solo and you need to use, you know, like three different skills, obviously, you know, that's a problem. But if the game has an area where it's, you know, you're going to be at a severe disadvantage if you don't have explosive resistance, you know, I think that's a good thing. You know, like if a level is designed more along the lines of we're going to have tons of explosions and an explosive resistance build might be, uh, you know, highly beneficial to the player. I think that diversity is a good thing because, you know, that encourages people to make builds specifically for that mission or specifically for that area. It's the same thing for everything. You know, like if this area is all about dropping enemies as quickly as possible so you don't get overrun, you know, having these, you know, incredibly high DPS builds, that's great. If this, you know, is, you know, levels about using using uh, snipers or using skill builds from cover because, you know, the enemies are just going to, you know, be pegging you from, you know, the ceiling or, you know, from the, you know, roof of the next building over, you know, whatever. Um, that's great. Because, you know, again, it's about a diversity of gameplay. You know, if, if you just keep running through the same, you know, style of game over and over again, I mean, that just, that just gets boring. And I think this is something that the Division 1 did a lot better than Division 2. Um, you know, funny thing to note is, 
you know, this boss here, which is actually the the first boss of, of the game. You know, this is like the starting area, you know, the tutorial mission, if you will. Um, <laughs> it probably actually caused the most people to quit this game out of anything in the game. Um, I, I, looking up the stats, I think um, probably, you know, you know, maybe like a year or two ago, uh, I, I think something like 25% of the people who quit the division left before they even completed this stuff. And, you know, if you, even if you just look up uh, this mission, which is the Precinct Siege, if you, you know, look up some of the comments on Reddit posts and stuff like that, you'll see a lot of people who are just unable to get past this boss. And, you know, I made a mistake here. You know, I, I kind of screwed up a little bit um, for this first attempt because obviously, I'm <laughs> like I said, I'm rusty. Uh, I should have turned around as soon as I realized I was getting shot from behind, but I didn't. But, um, yeah, this, this boss was was genuinely difficult and he was probably overtuned and you know it it was it was difficult um and of course this is still after you know they've already patched you know they've they've already kind of nerfed these enemies a lot and uh you know even even now he's still still difficult so i mean imagine when the when the game first launched <laughs> yeah i thought he was i liked it you know i it took me like four or five attempts to actually beat him the first time i started this game but I enjoyed that, you know, like I enjoyed that the game wasn't just handing me my first boss kill. You know, I enjoyed that the game was actually, hey, we are a difficult game and we're letting you know pretty much right from the start. I liked that. Um, and of course, you know, this is the whole part of what I'm saying. You know, if, if a game doesn't encourage you to change up your style every now and then, you're not going to, right? You know, and that's kind of what, what disappointed me a lot about the cleaners. Um, and this is actually in Division 1, too. I mean, uh, you know, they're the, the fire faction, right? You, you think, okay, if I'm fighting cleaners who are the fire faction, I'm probably going to need a lot of fire resistance. You know, that would make sense, right? But in the Division, and even in Division 2, like, it, you know, they, they've, they include status effects that hit you. But they are almost meaningless a lot of the times. And this is one of those things with build diversity where it's like, you know, you wouldn't need to use, you know, fire resistance against cleaners. You, you, you know, it's, it's fine if you don't have it, you know, like you, you don't have to use it. But if you don't have it, you need to play completely differently than somebody who does have it, right? You know, I would expect that if I completely loaded up on fire resistance, I would be, you know, kind of like uh, almost invincible in the division. Um, against cleaners, you know, not necessarily invincible, but you know, understand what I'm saying. Um, and this is unfortunately that's not the case. So, uh, I guess what again, what I'm getting at is, you know, if the game doesn't encourage, if the game doesn't make it extremely difficult for players to get by without adjusting their build at certain times, well, that's how diversity gets hurt in the game. You know, that's why we don't have a lot of diversity because if there is no need for something then it's useless. And that's why, you know, the, if you look at health in Division 2, if you look at, you know, explosive resistance as it currently stands in Division 2, a lot of those things are, are pretty useless. I mean, some people use weapon handling. I think, you know, it can be beneficial at certain points in time. But largely, it's ignored and kind of useless. Um, th there's a reason, you know, that you use things, and that's because you want them, you need them, they're useful to you, they help you do something. Again, if they don't help you do something, they're, you know, again, they're, they're not going to be used. They're not going to be useful to you. They're not going to be, you know, something that you need to run. But anyway, you know, th that pretty much concludes my starter mission in Division 1. Um, I'm going to be going through all the other missions and even some of the, you know, the side stuff, just kind of showing you guys the game so if you know you really didn't have much interest in division one if you really never gave it a chance or if you didn't quite see you know a, a lot of the potential of the game you know let's say you're a division two guy and you never saw the reason to go back you know play division one well i think there's a lot to offer in the game and that's kind of what i'm going to be showing uh, at least a lot in these videos or at least talking about a lot of these videos just kind of you know the differences i noticed between the two 
um, you know, what I think Division One offers, what they do right, and even talk about some of the stuff that Division Two does better. But either way, thank you for watching this video. I'll see you in the next one when I take over the base of operations.